short cause and effect quiz for my students. And one thing I did was I made sure up at the top that the require Mount Vernon School District login um, and the collect respondent's username was there. So it doesn't matter if my students put a name in or not. I know everyone who took the quiz, which is very cool. And so, and if you want to, of course, see what this looks like live, you can look at the live form. It's a cause and effect quiz. And then, but the cool part is when you get the results. So here is all of my students' results, and it's in a spreadsheet. And when you put the quiz live, you, the teacher, need to do the first response, so, because this is going to be the answer key. So you can see here's me, and uh, hopefully I did the correct ones. And then you go, uh oh, I just froze up. There we are. Are you still frozen? Uh, well, my screen's all black now. Uh-oh. So let's see if it comes alive here. Here we go. Here we go. So uh, you go to um, where it says tools. tools and uh, let's see. Gallery. Thank you. Script gallery and search for Flubberoo. And it will come up and then you install it. And basically, what with my answer key with multiple choice is uh, it, it's gonna, what Flubber is going to do is it is going to turn my text uh, responses from the multiple choice into either a one or a zero. It's going to make it a one if it is a correct answer, and it is going to make it a zero if it is an incorrect answer. And that's going to allow me to um, come up with a numerical score. So it's running the script because I went to Flubberoo. And then it's going to take you through a couple of steps. It's going to uh, show you your grading options. And then so the identifying the student is the username column. And then it's your different correct answers. Continue. And usually it goes pretty quick, although one time when I tried it, it took uh, several minutes. It's, this works, again, after your students take the quiz. So wait till everyone's done before you run this script. I also um, I made a copy uh, of, the, of the response spreadsheet before I uh, ran it. So I, always, I have the original text responses if I ever want to go back and look at them. Any minute now. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions while we wait? Another thing that you can do with this is, everybody can hear me, right? Yeah. So, oh, it's finished. All right. So now it says grading step two. And... Um, what it says, please select the submission to be the answer key. Well, that's uh, the first one, the one that I did, and then continue. So this works, again, with multiple choice or true-false um, because it has to match up an exact uh, text response. So if you have students typing it in and they forget to capitalize something or misspell something, it would show up as an incorrect answer. But one thing that you can do is you can, um, where, where it said one point, there's also an option for don't grade this question. So if you've got an open response question or a question that's not going to have one right answer, you could, you could um, do that and then you could grade that separately from the rest of your quiz.
it is pretty magic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what there's one step when this is done you'll see um, the numeric responses and you'll see that it will color like if, if you uh, in this case it, if, if you got two it's four questions four points if you got two or less it will put that student's login ID in red so it's going to highlight the ones that it considers to have been um, uh, you know below standard so view the grades and then here it is so those text responses are now uh, conveniently transferred to numeric now there's one step that you do at the end and what that is is you go to uh, click after the first student response in the cell after the first student response and you're going to go to the little um, function symbol and choose sum and what you're going to sum is the cell where the answers begin and hold the shift key down to the cell where the answers end and then hit return and that adds them up. Now here's what's cool, you don't have to do that each time, you just drag it down and you can drag it all the way down to the bottom of your spreadsheet and it will add up a total uh, for all your responses. And so you don't even have to add and look, you can just go down and uh, the spreadsheet does all the work for you. So I would just split this with my gradebook and uh, just enter the numbers right in. And that's it. Oh, one more thing, it also um, it will highlight the questions that the kids got wrong the most. So in this case, it does them in orange. That's it. All right, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to switch, you back, switch back to me. Thank you, Greg. Uh-huh. I said thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, do I unclick something? No, I think I'm good. I oh. think I, I am back to me, right? Yep. Okay, so just um, just for fun, if you if you are in this um, Google Doc right here, if you click on the sample quiz and quickly take that quiz right there. I think um, Tim is trying to answer Greg's question about the um, the distribution. Okay. So I'm not seeing anybody fill out my form here. Is anybody trying? <laughs> if not, we'll just move on. I won't wait for you. Tim is. Tracy Hall. Okay, so I'm just going to work with those those two that are in there right now. So, so these people are filling out a form, and then just like um, Greg said, I would go to Tools, Script Gallery, Webaroo, find that. Install it. Continue. Just want to show you how fast this can be to set up. 
Okay? And then if I go to Flubberoo here, I can click Grade Assignments. And because I didn't follow the first direction, I actually did, but then I messed up. So Tracy has the correct answer, so I'm going to use Tracy as my T here. So you'll see, if you look, my last question is a question that's not going to have one answer. So I'm going to change that to skip grading, and I'm going to hit continue. Okay, and I'm going to use Tracy as my key here. Um, Sharon, there's another there's another link that says sample quiz, not the Flubberoo link. And so then I'm going to view grade. So you see that was fast because there was only two right here. And um, so I have I have uh, Greg and and Tim here, and you'll see that that last question was not graded. And I can see as a class how we did. I can also see that um, the percentage score. Okay. So that was all done very quickly. Now if I look at the library right here, there's some other things I can do. I can regrade the assignment. So I can send it out to the kids again and say, let's take another look. I can also email the grades to my students because their email is right here. Um, I can um, edit student feedback. So if I click here, I get a uh, thing that says student feedback. And so I can type in here and I can say, great job. And if I want to just have the same student feedback for everybody, I can drag down and give that same feedback for everybody. Or I could actually have individual comments for each person. Okay, so that's Flubberoo. Very cool. Thank you, Sharon. I will regrade this assignment in, in a few minutes. And then I'll email you your, your, your results. Okay, so now we've looked a little bit at G Class folders, a way to um, set up a system. And you only have to really set that up once. And then you can use it all year long to send assignments to your students. Not needed. <laughs> and then um, the next thing I wanted to share with you is called Doctopus. So I'm going to go back over here to... And in here, I'm going to go to, I've got too much stuff going on here. So um, in Doctopus, what Doctopus does is it's a way uh, of sending out documents to your students. So just another way besides the, um, the G class folders piece. So I have this document right here. And I want to send this out to my students so they all have their own copy. So they're not all working on the same thing. And so what I can do with that is I can create a spreadsheet. So we start with a spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, what I'm going to do, actually I'm going to start a new one just so you can see. I'm going to create spreadsheet. And again, I would go to Tools, Script Gallery, and then type in Doctopus. Don't you love these names? Doctopus. And I would hit Install. Okay, continue. All right. Okay, so now if I click on Doctopus and click Launch Installation, and you would do this for each kind of document like this that you want to send out, but it get, it's pretty easy to do. And then you would, you would decide, I want this document to be an individual, but you could also send out um, to project, uh, project groups, so like one document goes to just part of your students, 
or you could have it differentiated where you have different assignments going to different students. The whole class is like one document that gets edited by everybody. But what I did with this document that I'm showing was an individual document. So everybody has their own copy of the same document. And then, <coughs> excuse me, I don't want the rest of the class to be able to see that document, but I want that one student to be able to edit it so I can set that up. <coughs> and I hit Save Settings. And so it's got some sample students in here right now, but obviously I would put my own class in there and decide which folder I'm going to put it in. Anyway, it goes through those steps and then it ends up looking like this. Okay? So what I did was I connected that, that document to my Doctopus file, and now I have... If you go to if you go to your shared folder, you're going to see a folder, and you're going to see a file that's called Malala and your name. Okay, so somebody tell me they see Malala and their name <laughs> in their Google Drive under Shared with Me. Okay, Tracy Hall sees Malala and her name. So Tracy, go ahead and. Um, open up that document, and it actually gives you an assignment to do that you don't have time to do right now, but just say something like, um, I'm learning about Doctopus or something crazy like that. And Sharon, you can do the same thing, okay? So again, it was really easy to send out, and then as a teacher, I have everybody's document in one spreadsheet so I can click on Tracy's Tracy's here and I see that Tracy is typing I'm learning about doctors right there okay so I see what Tracy's doing and then I could go back over here and I could check on Sharon and I could see if Sharon has done anything so she's got she used World Vic and saw this fabulous Preacher, da, da, da. And so I can check on what everybody's doing while they're working on their document. That's very cool. And I could actually use this right here to go through after the assignment is completed and everybody's done it, there's been a due date or whatever. I can see when people have edited the document. So I can see, you know, have you gone, gone and done something with it. I can give a grade. If I wanted to write specific feedback, I could. Okay? So that's all very cool right there. But here's the coolest part. Okay? Well, I don't know if it's the coolest part, but here's another cool part. There is a Google Chrome extension called Gubrick. Okay? Another weird name, Gubrick. So if you go to um, your app store, let's see. You go to the App Store in Google Chrome, if you're in Google, Google Chrome, and you type in Gubrick, it comes up with this, and it will say free. Mine says read it because I already have it. So once you have that Gubrick extension and you're using um, Chrome, I have to get back to where I was. So here I am here, and... I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, I'll go to Tracy's, where are you Tracy? I'm going to go to Tracy's, I'm going to click on it, and not only have I created a, um, a document that I shared with everybody, I also created a, got to get back to the right place, a rubric, okay? So this is a rubric that I want to use to grade that writing assignment, okay? So just the normal old everyday rubric that I created in a spreadsheet. Now let's go back to Tracy here. And what I can do is I can click on this little rubric thing because I've got that extension and I've actually taken that rubric and done um, and attached it to this. So when I click on it, it's going to look for an associated rubric. And 
and hopefully it's going to find it. It's thinking. Okay, and it pops up with the rubric that I created in a Google spreadsheet. So I could go through here and I could just give her scores. Sorry, Tracy. I'm just making it up as I go. Okay, so and you'll see in here also that it highlights the score that I gave for each one. If I had a comment, thanks for participating. <laughs> And once I've got it finished, I can set it so that it emails the score to the student or not, whichever way I want to do it. And then I hit submit and paste to doc. Now, until I do this, it, nothing's saved. So if I go out of here and I click somewhere else, all of this goes away. So just so you know that. But I'm going to click submit and paste. <laughs> And so that rubric pops right into their document. I think that's pretty cool. And so um, when that, that student might may either get this by email or you, if they just went into their Google Doc now and looked, this rubric would be completed in their, in their um, thing. So that's very cool. Now if I had more documents, I could go and I could pick somebody else's if I'm in the right place and do the same thing. So, and, and you'll see here now in my spreadsheet, I've got that information in here. Any written free feedback that I wanted to do, what, does, what grade do they get from getting that score and all of that. So, um, Greg asked if this works for presentations. Yes, it works for any kind of assignment that you um, give them. In fact, you could just... You could just go into Google Docs and create a um, create a document that says, um, you know, Civil War presentation, and then um, attach it to the rubric that you want. And so you, as a teacher, basically are pulling up a blank piece of paper and pulling up that rubric, and then the students are presenting, and you're you're putting in their rubric answers. And then they would get that blank piece of paper, which now has their rubric in it. Okay, and then um, Sharon says, at the point you have rubric this document, I assume students would not be able to change or edit anymore. Very good question, Sharon. So if I go over here to the, the documents up here, what it lets me do is it lets me embargo for grading. So when I'm ready to grade these, or when the due date is there, I could stop everybody from being able to edit this. And that's what you're asking. So they can't do anything to it. Now, I could do that, and I could do the grading, and they could get their scores, and then maybe, they, um, maybe they're going to get another chance to, to look at their rubric and then do something else to it, and then I could unembargo and they could jump back in and, and work on it some more. So then what would happen is they would have that rubric, the first rubric on their document, and any additional rubrics would show up under that one so they could see their progress. And um, Greg, I didn't quite finish your question, but like if this was a, if the document that I shared with everybody was a, was a Google presentation, exactly the same thing would work. I would be able to pull up their presentation on, you know, from here, from the link, and then pull up the, the rubric and be able to grade their presentation. Okay. So I know that was kind of a whirlwind of a lot of different scripts. But the main thing for you to know right now is there's some really cool scripts for creating folders for your whole class, for creating and grading simple multiple choice question quizzes, for, um, for sharing out a document with your students and having like a dashboard where you can grade everything in one place, and for adding rubrics to your work. 
So that's what I had to share with you guys. And there are links to uh, YouTube videos um, and different resources for each of these different things that you can take a look at and um, get reminded of what we flew through here. I would love to see um, some of these Sharon Tunning sound issues. I'm sorry. I would love to um, see some of you guys try some of these things and let me know how they go in your class. I did the G class folders with fourth grade dual language at uh, Madison last week when I did a little training with them on something else and I wanted to push out documents for them and it worked really well. It was just so nice for them all to have the same thing and know that the folder was titled correctly and all of that so that was really nice. Um, but anyway, I'd love for you guys to have a chance to play around with this. And like I said, think of a teacher in your building or two that might be interested in learning more about these. I can do a, a webinar on these um, like I've done um, for you guys, but I, I wanted to run it past you first because you're my brilliant trainers for everybody else. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else they need to add to our meeting today? Tim, you have any great things you need to share that you want me to turn the mic on for you? Nope. Does anybody have a question for Tim or me? Okay. So our next meeting, and you can still say something, I jumped at a okay very quickly, that wasn't a very long. Our next meeting is December 12th, it's a webinar, and um, if you've got anything specific you'd like for us to talk about, let us know, or something you want to learn about, let us know that, and um, we'll keep you up to date on what's happening with levy and purchase and all that kind of good stuff. Tracy's got a anyone know if what? I'm going to turn Tracy, Tracy's mic on so she can tell us, ask us a question. Tracy, are you there? Oh, now can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay, good. I just had to say yes. Um, that cheap deal by Comcast, they asked me to look into that. Do you know if that still exists for cheap internet, you know, $10 a month or something? Okay, and Tim, you can help me on this. It does. I just looked it up, uh, looked up the website for it. So what they're asking um, is the Comcast. Comcast has a low-cost internet solution for low-income families, and I can um, send that link out to you. Um, Thank you. I believe it was Tim and I. Um, it might have been I don't know who. Maybe maybe it was Pete. I don't remember when this happened, but we talked to the person from Comcast, and I remember. It was actually pretty limiting as to um, who could do it. Like, okay, it was Pete. Yeah. So it was um, like, for instance, they couldn't have an out. They couldn't have any delinquent bills from Com Comcast already, and it was not a wireless connection. It was a wired connection, so that doesn't work for a lot of our kiddos. Um, but yeah, so so I could send out the information though, because it might work well for some families. It's not as, and it is, yeah. Oh, the that the restriction of not just free and reduced lunch. They they do have to be free and reduced lunch, but then there's yeah there's some other things that just make it difficult for those free and reduced lunch families to actually be able to qualify for the program. Okay. Uh, okay. I, if you could send me that link, it would be great. Erin um, Fiedler told me she handed out handouts last year at conference time. Yeah, I will. I will do that. And okay. Thanks. See if I can find that for low income. Okay, and it's called Internet Essentials. I'll put that in our notes, but I'll also send it by email. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Okay. 
And Tim, you see Tim Snowden, the thing, he thinks um, most cable modems have wireless now, so maybe that's not as much of an issue as it was okay. before. Okay. All right. Thanks for the big question. Let's see. You mentioned that each teacher already has a G class folder and spreadsheet. Um, I no. Um, each teacher does not already have a G class folder and spreadsheet. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, uh, they would. Each teacher would have to create their own G class folder and spreadsheet. Um, you could create one big G class folder, Sharon, for. And I bet there is a way, Tim, I'm sorry, I'm answering. I bet there is a way to um, mass create those folders. Um, they actually, when you go into um, the G class folders, it, acts, it asks you if you want a school or a classroom. And so we could probably, um, Tim and I could look into that, and there might be a way to actually mass create for the whole school so we could all have that. But for now, um, at least there is a way to do it. So yeah, we can check, chat with Mike on that and see if there's a way to push that out for everybody. We'll do it if we can. Oh, and then Sharon, again, another good question. So she asked if one teacher could add me on as another teacher. And yes, definitely. So if, if I can find this folder and all my folders, um, all I would have to do to add you as a teacher in this group is just add you right here in teacher email, and then you would have access to this document, I mean this, this spreadsheet right here, plus the access to the students' folders. And then Greg has, um, if I create a form and check the show login box, and have all my students take it and use that, yes, you could. Yes. So Greg's just trying to figure out a way to get his, uh, his students in there. So anyway, and, I, and I, that's a good way to get your student emails um, in there is to have a form and get them to either type their in, type their thing in, or if it's in this case where it should, says the show logins, and then you can just grab that information and put it in um, either the G class folder or the um, Doctopus or any of those folders. So the ideas are starting to stir around. And Tim is promising an option tomorrow morning. Wow. Okay. <laughs> no pressure at all. All right, but these are really great and very simple to use. They look scary, but they're very simple to use. So I hope that it can actually kind of get some teachers excited about using them. Any more questions? Yes, Tim is a miracle worker. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to call it a night. You guys have a great night and thanks for attending. And I will tell you that I forgot to record the very first part of this um, webinar, so I will go back in and share, I think it was the G class folders part, so I'll add that on to the end of my, my thing. And um, But beyond that, we should be good to go. Thank you very much. Bye.